Okay, well, welcome everyone. <laughs> it's nice to see you again and welcome to have you back in this wonderful session. Uh, we are excited for today and the materials and the things uh, that God has led us to, to walk through with you and to hear from you about uh, all the things that God has been doing uh, since the last time. So uh, we're going to immediately break up into groups because we want you to be able to say hi to your small groups and we want you to talk about a few things. We'd love if you've talked about what happened since the last session and specifically related to that, Lisa finished off last time with these little staff guys, school leader guys, um, or your leader guy. And we want to know just as you've been thinking through that, um, what questions do you have? Uh, what did you implement from last time? She asked a lot of questions. Some of those questions were, um, what does a school leader have in their head or in their mind, right? Um, how does a school leader see through their eyes? What kind of things come out of their mouths when they speak? Um, what can they do? What are the things that a school leader can actually do? Where should they be walking? Where are they going? And what is in their heart? Okay. So uh, the idea was that you would write these things on your figure that you made. And we just want to start off with um, going back and thinking about where we left off. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that you've been doing with what we've been talking about so far since our last session, that it would be great to share that with your group. Okay, so we're going to break up into our uh, small groups for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back together and hear um, a few things of what's been going on and what people are sharing, okay? Só um minuto, já vou terminar de dividir as salas e a gente já vai para os grupos, tá bem? You're doing amazing. So there we go. 15 minutes. You can just come back later. See you guys. E essas duas coisas talvez não sejam o ponto forte do líder e que ele precisa entender que precisa ter pessoas ao seu lado que vão compensar e ajudar ele nessas fraquezas e nesses lugares. Então essa foi uma, uma das coisas que, que eu compartilhei e também foi muito bom ouvir elas compartilhando sobre cada uma das sessões e principalmente sobre o estilo de, de aprendizado. E acho que uma coisa que ficou de, de, para eu fazer, né? É, me familiarizar mais com o manual novo, que até então a gente ainda não tem ele traduzido no português, então eu acabei ficando bem familiarizado com o material antigo de 2005 e eu me surpreendi com essas coisas novas que eu vi no, no, no manual novo e estou animado para me aprofundar um pouco mais nele como algo para investir a partir de agora. Thanks. Thank you, Felipe. That's great feedback. One more. Would someone else like to share? Sí. Uh, muy buenos días. Um, Jimmy, okay. Sí. Bueno, nosotros en nuestro grupo eh, compartimos varias cosas y para algunos fue muy interesante sentir. Espero que, que me entiendan. A uh, sentir que Dios estaba hablando en este tiempo eh, de, de, de este tema, ¿no? De, de, nuestro, de nuestro trabajo. Y tal vez Dios estaba como trayendo memoria. Eh, uy, yo aprendí esto hace unas semanas atrás y ahora necesito ponerlo en práctica. 
Eh, entonces fue muy interesante y también varios en el grupo estábamos hablando acerca de cómo sentimos que uh, como algo común en lo que hablábamos es necesitamos siempre depender de Dios. No podemos eh, depender de lo que ya sabemos o depender de las circunstancias, pero necesitamos escuchar a Dios y a las personas eh, en cada circunstancia. No, no hay como, como que ya cada circunstancia es igual o parecida, puede ser parecida, pero no, no es igual. Y, y debemos y queremos aprender a escuchar a Dios en cada situación siempre depender de él eh, sin importar cuál, cuál es la, la situación eh, para saber también cómo podemos reaccionar de, de una manera adecuada. Entonces fue muy interesante pensar en cómo, cómo como líderes realmente debemos comprender esa dependencia de, de Dios eh, en, en nuestro rol y en nuestro trabajo. Gracias. Amen. Thanks, Jimmy. And thanks, everybody, for uh, feeding back and giving consideration and thought and giving uh, input into what has already been happening through these sessions. And we hope that as we continue on today, we'll be able to really glean more things that will help us serve, help us serve each other, help us serve uh, those around us and the things that we're doing. So, yeah, I think that's a really key thing that you brought up. You guys, all of you mentioned this, this heart of servant leadership, and I heard a lot about ownership. Mm -hmm. So it's really great. Such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So Anna's gonna take us through now, uh, just a little process that we have about what do we do now that we have these things, we have this perspective, how does it work? Yeah, so we talked about our school leader and we talked about being a, a person, but then um, I was, we were talking with Lisa, Melinda and I, we were like, okay, well, but when you put this one person, could be you, and then, You take them and you put them in the city. And they're walking around the city and then they look at these big buildings and they think, whoa, uh, there is so many people in this city and there's so many needs in this city and Oh my gosh, I'm only one person. So, what happens when you take this individual and you put them in a huge city? Um, you can feel overwhelming. It can feel like too much. But that's what we need to consider. What? How does this one person impact a whole city? a whole community, a whole village. Um, how does just one person make that impact? And so I wanna ask you, how do we impact a city? Does anybody have a thought on how, how do we even start that? Let's go ahead and unmute yourself, spill free. How would we do that? Puede ser, tal vez, eh, aplicando la, la visión que Dios te ha dado. Eh, y bueno, viendo, tomando iniciativa, eh, formando equipos, yes. llevando todo lo, o sea, llevando... Eh, Siendo obediente a lo que Dios te ha hablado, poniéndolo sí, en práctica. Great. Yes, thank you. So, 
we we listen to what God is telling us and we do those things. How else are we doing that? How do you reach the whole city? Any other thoughts? We see in the chat someone Eu said penso prayer. Que talvez esteja começando com o nosso próprio uh-huh. entorno. How about if we start to consider the different parts of our city? Wow, Michelle said it. There she is. Good job, Michelle. What'd she say? Train people in the spheres. Exactly. So as a university, the desire of what we're doing is we're wanting to impact the spheres of society. Yes, we're only one person, but this one person can impact a whole sphere. We're training people in spheres. So we have government, right? We have education. We have uh, media and communication. We have the sphere of religion. We have a sphere of economics. Oh, I lost my tack. (laughs) We have the sphere of celebration, arts and sports, and and our cornerstone of society, we have the family. So in the U of N, our desire and our calling is to train people into spheres, to actually go and how do we reach the whole of a city, to transform a whole city, is that we come in through the spheres and we impact spheres. We go in teams to impact spheres of society, to bring transformation and change. That's what God's called us to. Yeah. And so we wanted to pull back from, again, from the individual, which is important because if this individual doesn't understand how to live their lives in God's way, how can they go then into a city and impact a sphere or a whole group of people into God's ways? Okay, and so today we wanna consider again, taking out the big picture as the U of N were called to impact spheres. That's what we're training for. And so thinking about your place, what God has called you to, as um, they were saying, what what God calls me to, that's how I impact this city. That's Mm -hmm. right. You have to use what has God given you as a gift? What has God given you to impact? But then where does that fall? How do I call people to something? Mm -hmm. What am I calling them to? Melinda's going to take us into considering some of these things more specifically and really thinking about what am I doing and what am I doing with this university? What is God calling us to as a university? And that's part of our, you know, the the movement that we're called to. So good. So I love that key because we are looking at our the big picture the goal right the long term it's not just about one person because we when i am overwhelmed when i go look out my my window here and i see buildings as far as the eye can see and i just think about people as far as the eyes can see in my own city and you guys do that in your own cities and I think, how, Lord, how? And our longing and our desire is to see the nations transformed. And yet uh, we feel sometimes, what? What do we have in our hands? And I think the key more than what we have in our hands is we are working together in teams, in unity, in groups. We are training. We are calling people forth we are talent spotting we are saying hey you you're really good in this particular sphere have you considered 
your calling in that way. And so when we come together as a group, mm -hmm. we're not just one individual. That's we right. are we are the whole. Mm -hmm. And and so Anna's picture of reaching a city isn't just me, me the school leader, but our schools, our courses, our bases, our intentionality around our training needs to remember the big picture. What do we have in our hands, but who? Who is with us in the midst of all of this? And so um, this city is not transformed by our one person, but it is transformed by our one obedience, mm -hmm. our many acts, our consistency, our faithfulness. And in our courses, our one act of obedience with coupled with everyone else's acts of obedience, we see the transformation come. And so uh, we're going to look at some specific ways that transformation takes place in our schools. And I want to just go into, uh, I want to do our first breakout group, Carlinia. But the question, and it's been sent to your small group leaders, but I want to tell you the question. I want you to think through these spheres. Where's your picture? Here's the spheres and these pictures and these different aspects of the spheres. I want you to consider what sphere or spheres uh, is your school or your base or your leadership, however you operate. Um, what, which ones are you impacting? Okay, which sphere, which or spheres is are you and your base impacting specifically? And and then we'll go into some other your schools, perhaps your ministries. Um, I want you to think through that which areas, okay, and have a discussion about that. And then we will come back and feedback. Okay. Okay, so let's go for the rooms. Mateus. Mano. Tá entendendo espanhol então, bonito? Tô tentando. Não pode ficar no português, daí você vai de quando em quando para olhar. Não, mas eu, eu tô lá e dá para entender algumas coisas. Por exemplo, assim, eu não tinha, eu não peguei o start para abrir o grupo. Tava aqui não. aberto já. Não, fica eu... tranquilo. Mas aí é, fica tranquilo e pode ficar no canal. A gente só fica atento, entendeu? Porque o povo fica doidinho. E é isso que você viu, tá? Tá lá, ó. Depois do intervalo a gente divide. Aí, de repente, é não, agora divide. O Adriana falou, um dia você vai se quebrar, porque você faz host que nem você conversa, fazendo mil coisas. Daí você vai perder um negocinho. É. Ah, ah. Ah, é, é. E, ó, é, mesmo quando o Adriano tiver, viu? Deixa eu pausar aqui. Pronto. Fechei. Obrigada. Welcome back, everyone. So nice to see all of you. Okay, we would love some feedback just thinking about this question um, of the spheres. What spheres are you currently impacting? Now I can share. Um, we uh, share that we impact mostly a uh, church. 
uh, but also family. Uh, one of the persons in our group, uh, the, his base works a lot with families. So we do, um, they do have a lot of uh, work in that area, in fact, this area. Also communications. Uh, and, but we mentioned that all in all, we do reach all of the spheres through the church. Because as we disciple people and they go out and they are ready to influence other areas, other spheres. And one interesting thing that came is that um, we're talking that sometimes people come through the schools and they have tools to do their work. And they uh, have brilliant tools, they're very well trained, but they don't have much content. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes they use the, the tools that we give in the U of N that they uh, can produce content that is similar to whatever is being produced out there that is not exactly a Christian or a good content. And we're talking about how uh, the, the understanding of the uh, core courses is good for us because it should give people not only tools, but also content in order yeah. that, they, that they can create content that is good, but, but they need to have content first so that right. that could help them to um, have enough content to create stuff with the tools that they are given that they can reach out the spheres and not only with something that is actually good, that is actually comes from God and not only something that's nice, that's fun, that's entertaining, but that doesn't really make difference. Good. So that's what we're talking about. Okay, okay. I see the hand raised. In our group, uh, we had two things shared. One was about the arts, uh, the group in Cartagena, that they have a degree in uh, an associate uh, degree in arts. And they shared about two of their graduates, two girls that tomorrow they are going to graduate also from a, a local college and how whatever they have received from the ULAFAN degree uh, has really made a, a huge difference in uh, the, the how they did the other college and they are graduating with honors because they were so ahead of any other students. And uh, this has been challenging the school, the, the, the leadership of the, the, the arts in Cartagena to be even more intentional on how they not only prepare their students, but they get really involved in the, the area of arts in their city uh, by being an influence to that sphere uh, very intentionally. Awesome. And then, uh, the base in Maceió here in Brazil, uh, she shared that uh, uh, evangelism is, is what they do the most in their base, but due to the pandemic, uh, they had to change gears a little bit, not only to do uh, like uh, individual evangelism, but do it to families. So uh, they began to do practical things to the families. And because of that, they are having a, a lot of influence in the families and also uh, in education. Uh, and they have a, they created a, a program that they called Rescuing Values. So they've been working with the, uh, the themes of families, violence and drugs. And they've been uh, having a real impact. Uh, in families and education. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. I saw someone else had a raised hand. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, it was me. My internet is not good today, so I couldn't share in my group, but I, I was thinking we work mostly with Bible training and I, I was wondering that Bible training really kind of touches each one of the areas because like we are, we used to think that our Bible is related to church, so it's influencing church. And it's kind of, but I think that maybe why one Bible training is not very close to church because pastors doesn't like because it's not doctrine and it's different. And, and people come because they like they are thirsty to learn about the uh, about the bible and what god wants to tell them but it doesn't really relate with church i think it's also a uh, had relationship with education because many people they like they come back to to read again and they like to learn again because of the bible training 
and families because while they are studying the Bible, it also like impacts their families and their dynamics into inside the family and the, the relationships. And I think mostly should be communication as well, but the Bible really touches, like, I mean, each one of the spheres in some, somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's so foundational, right? All these core curriculum courses are, are foundational. And, and being intentional to get people to think through how our courses impact those spheres. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Gabriela. Hola, gracias. Bueno, nosotros en nuestro equipo éramos tres. Eh, nos dimos cuenta que algunas cosas teníamos en común, que trabajábamos en nuestras bases, como el trabajo con la iglesia, el trabajo con la familia. Eh, algo que una de las que estábamos ahí, que era de Paraguay, en la Celeste, estaba compartiendo de una oportunidad maravillosa que Dios les dio a ellos como base de poder trabajar con el gobierno, de cómo ellos, eh, haciendo una campaña de prevención con el suicidio de Tu Vida Importa, eh, se abrió una puerta tremenda que ahora, en este momento, ellos hacen parte con, de una mesa coordinadora de equidad de género de la mujer, y trata de personas, entonces ellos veían cómo era una oportunidad maravillosa que Dios le había dado para trabajar en esa área, y que a pesar de que quizás la persona que está de turno en el gobierno salga, ellos permanecen ahí pudiendo trabajar. En Cartagena allí también Natalia nos comentaba del fuerte trabajo que tienen ellos eh, con consejería, con la iglesia, consejería con personas, también muy fuerte ellos como base en el área también de negocios y artes. Y nosotros aquí, yo estaba recordando, porque ahora con la pandemia se nos cerró un poco la oportunidad, pero como nosotros somos fuertes en el área de consejería y trabajo con la iglesia y familia. Y cómo Dios nos dio en esas cosas de que hay personas que vienen a capacitarse y son gente que trabajan en la salud, por ejemplo, nosotros tenemos aquí cerca de la base un consultorio médico y el psicólogo del consultorio, que era un cristiano que se había alejado de Dios, eh, se capacitó con nosotros y cómo se abrió la puerta de poder trabajar con consejería con gente no cristiana. Entonces son esas oportunidades que Dios nos da ¿no? de poder eh, con personas claves. Él pone, a veces nosotros no, no llegamos a ver o a dimensionar, pero tenemos en este momento una puerta abierta con el consultorio y nos derivan matrimonios, eh, familia o gente que cree en la ayuda espiritual, así lo dicen, y vienen a poder capacitarse o a tiempos de consejería con nosotros. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's so good to hear all the spheres. Okay, we'll do uh, Diana. Uh, how about Diana? Do you want to go? É, bom dia, gente. É, aqui eu tô numa base onde a gente tem um trabalho assim mais prático com os povos indígenas aqui da região do Pantanal Mato Grossense. E a gente tem um, um ministério que ele trabalha com de bioconstrução. Então, a gente, durante a pandemia, uhum. diminuiu um pouquinho as visitas, né? Mas a gente tem tido uma abertura muito grande, muito bonita com alguns caciques. E eles querem que a gente esteja, a gente está construindo uma igreja que é indígena em uma dessas aldeias. E em janeiro a gente conseguiu ir com esse ministério, com a ajuda da Jocum Contagem, construir alguns banheiros em uma aldeia que era super fechada para o evangelho. Então eles não tinham né, é, banheiros, eles utilizavam de um buraco no chão. Então a gente foi construir ainda que simples e respeitando a cultura, a maneira como eles é, fazem as construções, a gente construiu, conseguiu construir alguns banheiros e a gente tem esse trabalho de bioconstrução e de desenvolvimento sustentável, né? E na prática também a gente tem a escola de audiovisual, que fez um filme com a etnia Bacairi, né? Na língua deles, com eles protagonizando o filme, e no ano passado a gente fez um filme com atores surdos, né? Em Libras, e foi muito lindo e rico ver como isso aconteceu, né? Como 
também tantas pessoas elas se abriram para este universo, né? Que é algo que no Brasil atualmente são 10 milhões de pessoas com deficiência auditiva e eu mesma não, não, nunca me atentei a isso, não é algo que eu olhei para, né? E foi muito rico é, participar disso, ainda que não como aluna, nem tão diretamente, mas porque aqui a gente faz tudo, né? É uma base pequena, então a gente está sempre em tudo. Então foi rico ver como os próprios atores surdos, eles se sentiram vistos, né? De importantes e como isso foi foi muito bonito para a história de como comunicar aos povos, né? De ver que Deus, ele comunica a todos os povos e que Libras é uma língua, né? E uma coisa que me marcou muito que a que a a, pro, a professora de Libras falou é que a gente se esforça para aprender tantas línguas, mas a língua de sinais a gente se esforça muito pouco e que é uma língua também. E na, em questões práticas, a gente está trabalhando com isso. Esse ano a gente vai produzir um, um curta com a comunidade, alguma comunidade de Pantanal Mato Grossense. Então, a gente está caminhando em relação a isso. E com, continuamos com o seminário de bioconstrução, sonhando que vire uma escola. E também a gente atua, a gente atua na área de humanidades, né, de governo, de política, com os seminários. E também é TED, né, com treinamento. E é isso, por enquanto. Obrigada. Awesome. So good to hear all that you guys are doing. It's amazing, right? Did you know that we do all of these things? And some of you are like, yes, of course, Melinda. Of course, of course we know this. But, but it's so good to hear the testimonies of what, how God has led us into the different spheres. Uh, so thank you. Diana for sharing that. Uh, okay, Gabriel, can you share with us? But uh, we're going to keep moving, so we'll have one more with you, and then we'll we'll ask our next question. Okay? Did you still want to share, Gabriel? Great. Okay. Bueno, nosotros en nuestro grupo estuvimos hablando acerca de las áreas que estábamos impactando, que era familia, eh, la parte social, sin duda eso que ha sido fuerte en este en esta temporada de los de la pandemia, también en el arte, ¿sí? Y algo que salió dentro de toda esta conversación de la, de la influenciar también como pensar en, en, en aquellos estudiantes que, que nosotros hemos tenido en nuestras escuelas y qué ha pasado con ellos. Yo creo que también nuestra influencia sería importante que pueda acompañar los procesos de quienes salieron afuera y qué hicieron. Porque algo interesante que se da en nuestros entrenamientos es que mucha gente recibe sueños, eh, talentos, dones de parte del Señor, y que después que ellos salen, viven toda una experiencia, ¿cierto?, para influenciar la sociedad, pero no, no logran muchas veces cumplir esos sueños o cumplir esos propósitos de Dios, o cumplir, el, el, la, a impactar esa área de la sociedad, y que sería quizás bueno que pensáramos cómo podemos nosotros dar un seguimiento a ellos para que también se cumpla esta esta Esta, este sueño, este don del Señor que le ha dado para poder eh, continuar eh, impactando mm. otras áreas de la sociedad que a la vez nosotros impactamos porque fuimos instrumentos del Señor para, para traer esta, este, este don, talento o sueño. Eso. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you everyone for sharing. I don't know if you noticed, but we uh, we try to touch all of the areas in in what we're sharing. However, I think there are sometimes there are areas we're missing uh, as a whole, and even maybe in why wham total we're in in the U of N we're missing maybe some of these spheres. And so let's go back into our groups and ask ourselves this question. What are we actually equipping our students, our staff, uh, members of our team? What are we equipping them to be like? Because if we want to reach these spheres, then we need to think through the process of how we are equipping people to reach the sphere. So think about what you're already doing, these things that you've said, and how are you making sure that you are equipping them to reach this sphere, okay? 
how are you equipping them to to reach these spheres specifically so we we'll just think with your leadership hat with your school leader hat with your you know eyes over the whole could we be more strategic you know thinking through some of those kinds of things so we're going to go back into a 15 minute uh, time where we can discuss some of that like thinking about your roles what roles do we have to impact these spheres okay so we'll move back into our groups and have some discussion around those questions okay indo para a sala gente a gente avisa quando faltar cinco minutos Okay, welcome back everyone. My internet connection is unstable at the moment, so I hope that I can continue to connect with you. Um, so the point of clarity just on that question was, how are we preparing people to impact those spheres you've identified? And I hope that came through in your discussions. Um, because I realized that my lead up into that question wasn't necessarily as clear as I would have liked to it for it to have been. Um, however, please do feedback with uh, some of the things that you guys discussed and then, um, yeah, I'd like to hear even what, even if it wasn't the question being answered directly. <laughs> Okay, we can we can share. Um, nosotros, lo siento, no sé por qué iba a hablar en inglés, <laughs> pero nosotros estábamos uh, hablando acerca de que hemos estado trabajando fuertemente en las bases. Yo estaba con Ana y Gabriela. Hemos estado trabajando para salir de esa burbuja de la escuela, de estar mucho en actividades, actividades y involucrar a los estudiantes y al estar más en ministerio práctico en las esferas de la sociedad hemos estado haciendo como intencionalmente eso eh, pero necesitamos crecer en cambiar ese enfoque de solo la escuela o solo el área que trabaja en la escuela sino presentarles a ellos el resto de ministerios o el resto de cosas que hay para, para ellos hacer y también hemos dado oportunidades para que escuchen a Dios, para que vean como cosas prácticas que ellos pudieran hacer para bendecir a la comunidad. Un área que vemos que nos hace falta tocar como esfera es negocios, tanto para las tres bases que estábamos hablando. Es un área que uh, uh, no tenemos entrenamiento, no sabemos cómo se haría. Y yo estaba pensando, uy, ¿cómo hacemos con el valor de depender de relaciones? Si hacemos un negocio y después dependemos del negocio y cómo no olvidamos el valor de depender de las relaciones, es como algo difícil de entender. Entonces, de pronto, si pudieran aclararnos eso en alguna otra sección, también de cómo trabajar con las esferas. Uh, ¿Tenemos que trabajar con todas o deberíamos proveer capacitación y motivación para todas, pero eh, la gente puede venir y escoger? Entonces, ¿qué debería hacer una base? ¿Deberíamos tener un ministerio con cada esfera o debería simplemente proveer capacitación o enfocarnos en una? Es como algunas preguntas que nos surgían hablando de todo esto, de ser más intencionales. Excellent, thank you, Natalia. That's those are great questions, and uh, we'll address those here in just a little bit. So, would anyone else like to continue sharing? Leis. É, no nosso grupo a gente falou um pouquinho é, que a gente está assim crescendo é, em algumas é, nas esferas, seja uh, nos negócios, na né, missão e negócios, né? A gente tem visto como o pessoal compartilhou, né? Tanto na área do cinema, né? Tem tido esse crescimento, mas a gente ainda precisa mais de amadurecimento, né? Então a gente precisa da técnica e do conteúdo, né? Então a gente precisa ser sim mais efetivo nisso, né? E traz também a vocação, né? A gente ser trazer o 
O valor número cinco, né? A gente ser visionário, né? No, no momento que a gente está, nos nossos alunos e, e liderar de mão aberta, porque muitas das vezes a gente tá, vai lá, você faz aquilo que Deus está te mandando fazer, mas a gente não mantém aqueles que estão indo para fora. Então, a gente não mantém um relacionamento com eles para estarem junto conosco, né? Não estão na Jocum, mas ainda assim a gente perde, né? Ah, foi. Então, a gente precisa manter esse relacionamento, né? Então, é o liderar de mão aberta, a gente ter mais orientação vocacional é, os que estão dentro e manter o um relacionamento com aqueles que estão fora. É, eu acho que a Cláudia compartilhou também que tem um, um movimento, um programa fora, o I Am Connection, né, que traz essa conexão das esferas com aqueles que estão dentro. Então, eu acho que no Brasil, acho que na América Latina, a gente precisa disso. Né? Então, se é algo que já existe, a gente precisa, então, é, saber mais e, e assim, ser mais efetivo né, nas, nas esferas da sociedade. Awesome. Thank you. Those are great comments, great thoughts. Uh, intentionality is what I, I heard a lot with that, and that, that's excellent. Okay, let's hear from one more. Karim, do you want to share with us? É, a gente falou um pouquinho, tem um pouco, tem, foi, falou um pouco a ver com a pergunta, né? Como nós estamos preparando as pessoas para as esferas. É, um dos pontos que a gente tratou foi sobre nós, como escola, como obreiro e líderes, conhecer os nossos alunos, né? Saber aquilo que Deus colocou na vida dele como dom e talento e, e sermos impulsionadores disso, né? Como que a gente faz isso? Apresentando as esferas para ele, apresentando cada lugar, levando eles para não só interceder por elas, mas tocar, sabe? Tá, tá né, nos lugares e conhecer pessoas que estão nesses lugares e tornar a esfera mais palpável. É, nós, como líderes e obreiros, termos, sermos visionários no sentido de, de encorajar, impulsionar eles, até mesmo direcionando para uma próxima escola. Por exemplo, um aluno de ETED, entende que ele está sendo chamado para, não sei, para igreja, para alguma esfera, e direcionar as escolas que estão acontecendo posteriormente, para que eles sejam é, ainda mais agregados né, de conhecimento, enfim. É, e uma coisa que a gente falou que foi super importante foi para a gente entender que quem convence é o Espírito Santo, né? Não somos nós. Não somos nós que vamos... A gente vai impulsionar, vai encorajar, mas quem convence do papel deles e de, daquilo que eles fazem é o Espírito Santo. Então, a gente encoraja eles a ouvirem Deus, encoraja eles a obedecerem aquilo que Deus está fazendo, está falando com eles, né? E assim eles se tornarão efetivos na, nas áreas que Deus os direcionar. E é isso. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, that's excellent. Yes, being led by the Holy Spirit with all of these things is so key. You guys have such good uh, discussions, such rich discussions. Okay, um, I do want to hear from, from, from you, Franzi. I see your hand there. However, I do realize that we've been doing this for a little bit, so we're just going to take a quick break for 10 minutes. And uh, then we can come back together and we'll, we'll hear from you after our break. So I want to honor uh, our time. And uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back. We'll talk about some of these questions that you're talking about. We'll hear um, and we will uh, keep discussing how do, we, how do we do this with our little guy and with what we have in our hands, yeah? Okay, uh, please. Put a 10 minute yes, timer. Yes. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a lovely break. I see we're still getting set up. It's okay. Uh, we, while we're waiting, just we will get, uh, I think we're good. Are we good? Good to go? Yeah, okay. Next. Uh, Franzi, I didn't, I didn't want to cut you off, but I do want to just, I wanted to come back and see, did you have a question or would you like to share with us from your group? Both are fine. Uh, 
é só um feedback mesmo do que a gente conversou. É uma forma como a gente tem, tem falado, né? Aqui nas nossas escolas, a gente, como a gente tem é, falado sobre a Universidade das Nações, para muitos alunos, é, falar das esferas da sociedade é muito novo. E, e para eles, quando a gente apresenta uma universidade é, que, tem, que trabalha com essas esferas, né, com as possibilidades que tem dentro dessa universidade, eles ficam assim é, surpreendidos e muito e, e de certa forma se identificam porque à medida que a gente recebe alunos que que não tem nenhum curso de graduação de uma universidade a gente também recebe já pessoas formadas e, e, e geralmente essas pessoas que têm formação elas não sabem como ser é, influência dentro da área em que ela em que ela se graduou e dentro da universidade, né, como a gente tem falado aqui, a gente traz luz a isso, eles, eles conseguem se identificar e achar sentido para a sua graduação. Então, muitos dos alunos que a gente recebe aqui na base, eles é, são incentivados a fazer outros cursos da Universidade das Nações para entender melhor, né, algo mais específico para a sua área, logo depois da ETED. E... E também entender como eles podem ser bênção no reino, né? voltando é, para a sua igreja, é, influenciando uma pessoa da área a qual ele, ele é formado. Mas acho que essa comunicação da escola, né? de, de abrir essa, essa visão para a universidade, de reino mesmo, de como que ele pode ser influência nessa área, é algo que a gente tem deixado muito claro. Né? Que o, o, nosso, o nosso objetivo não é tirar ele... Do, do local né, em que ele está e colocar ele dentro da missão e, e ele ficar apenas numa, numa bolha, né, como a gente fala, cristã, mas realmente ele ser influência. Né? E aí, é, prática de ouvir a voz de Deus, né, que é a nossa base para tudo que ele, que ele decide fazer e e entender que ele é benção e, e, e é uma pessoa que foi é, formada para viver o propósito de Deus. Né? Então, é, trazer essa clareza para o aluno é muito importante, porque muita gente chega muito perdido, né? e, e as pessoas chegam muito perdidas, sem saber o que fazer. Não, não confiam que podem ser influência, acham que, que se forem para é, voltar para um, os seus trabalhos, elas podem é, desviar, elas podem... É não ser influência e não conseguir, né? Então a gente tem, a gente foca muito nessa questão de ouvir mesmo a voz do Senhor e ser direcionado por elas. E dentro disso a gente recebe pessoas que vêm com vontade de ficar para a missão e Deus fala para voltar. E, e outras pessoas que não querem, é, que veio só para um curso, o curso por tempo e acabam ficando na missão. Então é, é isso que a gente conversou no nosso grupo, né? Como a gente tem sido influência, como que a gente tem passado isso. Obrigada. Thank you so much. Those are such important things that you brought up. And I think what I'm hearing also is that we really need to be strategic. So I have a little example here. This is our, what we have in our hands, right? Our giftings, our callings, our ministries. And we want to do something with them. So then we just kind of throw them out there. And we're like, use this, Lord. And I'm frozen. Are you still with me? So we have these things and we're just kind of trying to use them in ways that we see, oh, there's a good spot. Or I'm not sure about this one, but we'll try over here. But really... The challenge for us is to, to plan and to have a goal. What are we doing with these things? Are we, are we being strategic? Are we being specific? Do we have a goal or are we just kind of tossing them into the void, uh, hoping that they're going to make an impact? And I think a lot of your guys' questions like, should we do all the spheres or should we just focus on one? Well, well, what is our strategy, right? What is our strategy? If our goal is to impact one sphere, 
awesome. Let's do that really well. If God has called us to do all the spheres in our location or in our schools, great. Let's do that really well. Um, so, but the, the thing is that I keep hearing is that we need, we need ownership, but specifically we need intentionality. So let me talk a little bit about what, what we're talking about here. So for example, I think this will hopefully be an excellent uh, analogy. You guys, anybody here like uh, football, the soccer kind? I am an American. I call it soccer. Anybody here like football? Raise your hand if you like football. Are we have any football fans? At least you know what football is and you watch it, right? Like occasionally when the World Cup is on, there's there's football fans out there. Okay, I see everyone's <laughs> hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here's the thing, right? You are a school leader. You are like the coach. Okay, you're a base leader. You are the coach. You are not the players. Okay, you are not. A, you are on the field, but you are not playing the game. Okay, what you're doing though is you're strategizing, you're watching, you're analyzing, you're considering how to move pieces around, you're taking people off when they're tired, bringing new people on. Okay, you are. You are equipped with all of the skills of playing football. You know the game, you know the rules, you know how it works, but you're not playing, right? You, you're preparing everyone, you're giving input, you're showing charts, you're training them, but you're not actually in the game. However, you are part of the game, okay? But our students, right, they're the players. And they're amazing. They're giving their best efforts, right? They come to our schools and they are zealous. They have giftings, they're talented, they're called, they have capacity, but maybe, just maybe they don't know how to kick a football, right? And that's why they're at our school. They're at our school to learn how to kick a football because maybe they have passion. But I, I want you to know that I'm super passionate about sports, but if I try to kick a football, I don't care if I'm giving 100%, I'm not going to make a goal because I, I can give all of my great effort, all of my best intentions, but I'm not going to be David Beckham. I'm not going to be uh, anyone Mo Salah, that's, he's very famous here. He's an Egyptian player. I'm not going to be any of those people because with my passion, I can't transform myself. I can give my 100%, but that's not enough. What I need is a coach. I need someone who has understanding of how to use my passion, how to use my gifts, how to use my skills to actually direct me to be a better player. I need someone to help me say, you know what, when you kick the ball, your foot does this weird thing and that's why the ball doesn't go anywhere. Or your eyes, you're not focusing. You're, you're, not, you're not paying attention to what's around you. So the ball gets taken away very quickly by somebody else. And so there's so many aspects of of us being leaders as coaches, that we can train them in. We can see where they need to go. We can see the goal, and we can take these things that they're passionate uhum. about. Pegar essas coisas que as pessoas são apaixonadas e ajudar elas a alcançarem aquele gol, aquele objetivo. Right? They are playing. We are playing with them, but uh, we we have to know where we're going. We have to have a goal, and we have to have clarified objectives, right? Each week in training, there's objectives. Okay, you know, this week, you guys over here, you need to be better at defense. And this week, we're going to work on offense. Mm -hmm. And and so in our training, we have to know what role are we equipping our people for? You know, not everyone is is able to have the ball all the time. We have to work together. We have to be strategic in our plays. We have to have a playbook. We have to remember what our playbook is. And this is what it's like in our schools. 
when we are training people, we're trying to equip them for a specific, reaching a specific sphere, right? It's not just a, a Bible school. It's not just communication school. It's not just an art uh, or some particular field that we're working in, right? It, there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger goal. And we don't want to lose that focus. So when we're in our schools, when we're training our staff beforehand, when we're training our students in the school, we really want to make sure that we have these goals, these focuses, and we are planning step by step to reach that goal. To, to be the Champions League, to be uh, the FIFA World Cup holder, right? We want to reach whatever the goal. And what is the goal for us? Well, the goal is that the whole world, right, would know God. And we do that through the spheres. And so if we're not aiming to impact a sphere, and we're not strategizing, we're not planning, we're not making specific goals, how do we know? that we're actually going to impact these spheres? How do we know that we're going to, to reach them? How do we know we're serving uh, these nations? And so we want to be strategic in, in our little guy. Where's our little guy? Oh, he's here. He's, he's, got, he's got a calling, but he's not doing it by himself, right? He's got a team. And we need people who can see, we need people who can sit up in the coach's box and they can see the whole field, the big picture. We can't always see the big picture. We just see ourselves and what God put in our hands. But we, we want to be more intentional, which is what you guys have, have talked a lot about, intentionality. We need to be so intentional on reaching these goals. So are we planning ahead of time? Do we have our playbook, also known as our outcomes, also known as our objectives? Do we have a playbook for our school? Is that clear? It, are all of our staff, our coaching staff, which, you know, our staff with us, are they on the same page? Are they trying to play some other different playbook, right? What, are, we, are we matched up? Are we aligned in those things? And do we have vision? Do they know where they're going? Do they have a vision like, okay, hey, over here, just this needs to be adjusted. Just, just work on this skill, right? This skill is what we really want you to have because this is the skill that's reaching the goal. Or are there uh, character aspects? You know, when you're in a team, character matters big time. And uh, I'm gonna leave some of those things for Lisa to talk about because she's gonna talk to us about all these different aspects that really matter and how does it actually work? Um, and how do we actually see what God is trying to do through, through our particular ministries, through the things that God has gifted us with? We wanna have some intentionality with that. So um, when we are working together in a team, and we see this and we have staff, our staff and our students then can work together so much more closely if they know what the goal is. If they see the goal, they're all focused on the goal, we're all walking to the goal, we can then actually help each other get there. And I think that's what I hear a lot of you saying is that we don't know what we're doing. We don't know who's doing what in what sphere. We don't know where we're going. We don't know who did what and how we can connect with them in, in their spheres. And, and these are the kinds of things we wanna to bring together more specifically. And Lisa's really gonna, in our evening session, she's gonna give us some points uh, to do that. So Lisa, I just wanna give you a minute to, to go ahead and introduce some of those things. You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> so let's let's get some feedback in the chat. What are the things that you need to develop in players if you're going to win the game? What are the elements that are your responsibility if you're the coach? Okay, so Melinda's been talking about it. What, what are we seeing? What needs to be developed in each player 
if the team's going to be successful. Reach your goal. Okay, good. Vision and initiative, teamwork, strategy, helping work together as a team, I think, maybe is what Karem is saying. Okay. Unity, uh huh. Physical conditioning, yeah. Persistence, mm hmm. Yeah, practice. <laughs> That's how these things develop a lot of practice, <laughs> exactly. Mm hmm. Communicating, humility, good. Yeah, the freedom to learn new things. I think that's what Anna Celeste was saying. Uh huh. Yeah, being able to attack and defend, servant leadership, practice skills, excellent. So, if if we explored this more, we would recognize that you you're looking for three areas, aren't you? You have to understand the game. What, what are we trying to do here? You have to understand your particular role on the field. What's my part? Am I supposed to be attacking or defending? What, what's my part of the field? What's my role with everybody else? There's an element where you have to have some understanding, right? Good. Developing knowledge, as Natalia says. And, and without that, you might have the best leg in the world and be able to boot boot it, you know, 50 meters, that doesn't help if you're going the wrong direction, right? Because you didn't know. So there's an element of understanding. Okay. Now, your understanding is not going to help unless you've got the skills to put it all into practice. Right. And so there's countless hours of running and passing and kicking. My son played football quite a lot in secondary school and at university. So I'm not a good football player, but I've watched enough games and practices. <laughs> so you spend countless hours developing each individual skill to be able to put together to play the whole game. And, and so you have to think as a coach, they need to be able to move side to side, front and back. They need to be able to see the field. They need to be able to kick. They need to be able to dribble. So many different skills that go into, now I can carry out and move toward the goal. You also need, as you guys listed, so many attitudes. Without those attitudes, you might understand and have great skill, and you're no use to the team because you're just out there by yourself. You have to have the heart to work well with your team, as you guys have been talking about, and to work your hardest. There's very few things that are as frustrating to a team as somebody who's just not trying very hard. and They're not giving their best. And so you have to have the heart attitudes that are part of putting all of those things, the knowledge and the skills into action. I'm giving this my best. I recognize I'm not alone out here, that it's all part of it together. And so any task, any goal that we have has those three components. Isn't that right? There's always, do this with me, with your hands, Okay, there's always things you have to know and understand, right? There's always skills. There's always things you have to be able to do. And there's always things that you have to have in your heart, your values, your attitudes, right? And so whether you're trying to win a soccer game or whether you're trying to influence a city through the arts, you will always move from what's the big picture, what's the vision, what's the goal? And that's what we've been talking about today. The goal isn't to run a good school, right? <laughs> Just like being a soccer on a soccer team, the goal isn't to have a good practice. The goal is win the game, but to get there, you have to have a lot of practices. 
And, and so having that goal in mind, what does my sphere look like when it's been transformed? Okay, that's a great question to start with, to start your school with, to start your staff training with. What does that look like? What's my part in my school? What does my student need to be equipped to be able to do it with me? What should they be able to do? What should they understand? And what do they have to have in their hearts? And so you starting with the big picture, seeing where you fit, and then being intentional means I have identified what's needed. And now I can plan effectively toward gaining the, do it with me, the knowledge and the skills and the character or values, okay? So this is how you start moving effectively toward those goals that you have clarified for your school. Melinda and Anna, do you want me to keep going or segue back into you guys? Please carry on, Lisa. You're doing fabulous. Okay. So, so let's bring this down to your school. Okay, we've talked about what does a soccer player or football player need to have in order to be the best he can be and make the biggest contribution to his team. Okay. What about your school? You are preparing your students for, for what? Right? Well, we want them to be artists. Well, that, that's like, I want you to be a soccer player. You no, know, I want you to be a forward. I'm training you for that role, right? Everybody has a role. And so what's your school preparing people to do? What role are they taking in that sphere? And once you have that clarity, I want them to be a dancer. I want them to be a graphic artist. I want them to be a church planter or a Bible teacher. I want them to be able to effectively disciple children. Okay. What role will they take? Might be in a secular uh, environment. Some of our students do that. Might be a role on YWAM team. But thinking about, I want to run this school because it's a cool school and there's lots of cool things to learn. That's true. But being intentional means I have a really clear target. So thinking about what do I want them, what place do they take when they're done with my school? Okay. Then you start asking yourself, well, what capacities? Okay, that's a, it's a good word for us. What capacities do they need to become that person, to take that role? Okay, what do they need to do with me again? <laughs> we'll get this because we keep practicing. What do they need to have in their heads? What do they need to be able to do with their hands? What do they need to have in their hearts? Okay. What capacities do they need in order to take that role? So we want you to be thinking about that. How much time do we have left here? Well, we've got some time. Um, Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I am thinking about this. So let's go into our small groups now and let's spend some time and I want you to, we'll see if we can get you a, a, yeah. I want you to think in your small groups and discuss and generate some lists of uh, capacities, qualities that people need to have. 
Okay, do we have a list of this competence and skills? It's a good question. Claybor is asking. This is what I want you to start thinking about is what kinds of things do your students need to know? Okay, what knowledge do they need? What kinds of skills do they need? Okay. And what kind of, well, let's call it character. What kind of character do they need? Okay, and that character is acting out of your values. It's the behavior that acts out of your values, right? So I want you to go into your small groups and uh, maybe this evening we can work more specifically with people that share the same sphere that you're working in. But for now, we'll go into our small groups and and do some thinking, okay, about what kinds of character qualities and think about your role that you're training someone for. And then start to think about what kind of qualities, capacities do they need in order to take that role? I'm looking for Daniel. Can someone translate what he said in the chat? Oh, okay, he's just translating my questions. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, trying to think. I, the little I think I, I think 10 would be good for that, Lisa. Would would 10 I think 10 would be good to get us started on that. Yep. Why don't we go ahead and jump into that and just start that thought process together? Okay, so what I want you to come back with to this group is a yeah. list of some things they need to know, some skills they need to develop, and some character qualities that need to develop for them to be able to take that role in the community or in the YWAM base, in that sphere. Does Thank that make sense? Yes, great question, Lisa. Thank you. Yes. So let's go for our groups. See you. Na parte de habilidade, é o falar, é a escrita, no caráter, ser diligente, ser íntegro, né, trazer a verdade. Então, a gente compartilha um pouquinho de cada uma, mas assim, lembrando, não é só estar ali no registro, né? mas sim reforçando e reforçando e trazendo e treinando nossos jogadores para um objetivo mesmo final. Excellent. Excellent. That, that's the kind of thinking we're going to build toward. Once we've identified with more clarity what our goals are, then that brings new clarity in how we can move toward them, doesn't it? So I love the mix that you had of identifying some capacities and starting to think about how are some ways we can work toward those. Excellent. Okay, how about group number four? Group number four, what are two things people need to, what is it? No. No, <laughs> and? Two. Two, and? Uh. I don't remember the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Having your heart or character, I guess, is good. Yeah. Sí, bueno, este, en particularmente voy a hablar de mi, de lo que yo pienso en, en cuanto a nuestra escuela de discipulado bíblico. Una, bueno, lo primero es que las personas conozcan quién es Dios a través de la Biblia, de que puedan mm -hmm. dar mm -hmm. a, a través de de lo que pudieron aprender y que, y que ellos puedan ser empoderados en su propósito en Dios. Una de las cosas es conocemos a Dios y, y entendemos cuál es, cuál es nuestro llamado, cuál es nuestro propósito en, en, este, en este mundo. Entonces, con eso, las personas pueden identificar y abrazar no solamente lo que ellos hacen en la escuela, pero también abrazar el todo. Hay algo chévere que habla David Hamilton mm -hmm. acerca del cada y del todo. O sea, no solamente abrazan eh, la escuela, pero abrazan 
lo que no solamente abrazan la Universidad de las Naciones, pero también abrazan Jucum, los ministerios de misericordia, de que ellos puedan expander su visión, pionerar, eh, a, como atreverse a cosas que no han hecho antes. Entonces, eso es una de las cosas que uh -huh. pienso ¿no? eh, uh -huh. eh, estamos haciendo en, en, en nuestra nice. escuela y que necesita reformarse. Se, se, necesitamos nice. seguir creciendo en eso. Ok, excelente. Yeah. Good, group number three. Same question. What are two things that your group talked about that we, what is it? And we, and we, <laughs> we're, we're going to get this in our heads because these are your tools. These are your strategic leadership tools. And well, it's a very simple framework that we have to get used to using all the time. Okay, so you may feel silly repeating these motions. But trust me, you won't forget them. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Guri. Grupo do Daniel, quem vai falar? Looks like that's Daniel's group. Hokum Palabra Viva. Ok, yo puedo hablar. Ah, ok. Eh, What, what's your name, Hokum? <laughs> My name is Tulio. Ok, that's what I thought. Tulio. I am using the Zoom. <laughs> okay, Next section, I, I will write down my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ok, so we talked in, in our group about the... Uh, the things that we know usually is it's easy like the knowledge mm -hmm. especially when we do registration is easier to to write down because yes. it's more natural to think about yes. the new information mm -hmm. but then when we had to think about do and the hearts we need to think more yeah and usually see what this information brings to the things i do to my skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I think the, the, the goal, the most important thing is, is the characters, the abilities, the, the, like the heart. And what do I need to, I mean, what do I need to leave or to remain in their hearts? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we talked about the, like the DTS, we had two people working with DTSs mm -hmm. and also counseling school and, and mercy ministries. I work with Bible mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then, we were talking about those things, like how yes. can I think mm -hmm. in my goal, my main goal mm -hmm. is, is like the heart. Mm -hmm. It's like the information is the easy part. Yep. Then the, like the, the do part, I think a little bit more, but the heart is like, is the most important thing to me is and should yeah. be yeah. what I invest more in, mm. in our school. Mm -hmm. So that was what we were talking about. Brilliant. Really an important conversation. Thank you for sharing that with us. And it, it's true. Certain courses naturally tend to focus more on the heart or the skills or the knowledge. And that's why every course has to consider all three. Okay, for example, and I'll come back around to the other groups, something like forgiveness. You think, oh, well, that's a heart issue. Well, you have to understand what is forgiveness? What isn't for forgiveness isn't excusing somebody for doing something wrong, right? Forgiveness isn't denying that it didn't hurt. Forgiveness is recognizing someone did something wrong and I choose to forgive them the debt they owe me. See, there's an understanding piece. Then there's a skill piece. How, how do I forgive? Do I just try not to think about it? Do I just go, oh, well, I'll, I'll just try and be nice to him. Like, well, what, what's the skill of forgiveness? And here's the thing about a skill. It's 
anything that gets better with practice. Okay? Anything that gets better with practice. And so some skills are thinking skills, aren't they? Being able to analyze, being able to uh, compare, being able to look at implications, evaluate. Those are thinking skills. Okay? There's relational skills. And a lot of the skills that you identified so far have been, uh, how do I speak publicly? How do I build relationships? How do I communicate visually? Okay, those are skills. Okay, so forgiveness, there's a skill. Leading someone through a prayer of forgiveness because they don't know how, right? And then there's the hard attitude. Are you willing to forgive? Do you want to forgive? See, and, and so it might be, how do you run a camera? You know, how do you paint a picture? Same thing. You ask the three different levels. What do they need to know and understand? Well, they need to understand color. They need to understand composition. They need to understand different materials and how they interact. They need the skill. They need the practice. Practice drawing a straight line. Practice mixing your colors, right? Because knowing the different color combinations is different than being able to mix them and use them effectively. Knowledge, skill. And then you have to have the values, the heart values. Okay. So you hit such an important point, Tulio, that identifying the skills that are needed take a different kind of question than just the, oh, this is such cool knowledge. It is cool knowledge, but it doesn't do any good if it stays in your head. There has to be skills. How do I use that? What's the meaning of it? Okay. And then what's in my heart? Am I going to use it to lift myself up? I'm smarter than everybody else. I'm better at things than everybody else. Do I see, do I have the values that this allows me to serve? This allows me to honor God. This allows me to lift a community out of poverty. Okay. What are the heart values? Many of them will be common across all of our schools, but there are specific qualities that are needed in your the role that you are preparing people to take. So it does take us deeper in our thinking. We'll go into more of that this evening, and we'll talk about how, how do we make those clear enough to lead well from them. So here's your homework group. I think we've got a couple more groups, but we're out of time. Sorry. Um, hang on to those. We'll come back to those this evening and add to our list that's growing. For your homework, I want you to think about your school. And I want you to identify what role am I preparing people to take through the training provided in my school. And most of the time, there's a secular role they could take and there's a, a mission role they can take, okay? And so think about what would someone do out in the community with my training? That, that's one way to identify what's the role that I'm preparing people to take. But they might take that role on your mission space, okay? But we're not talking about what knowledge do I want to give, but what do I want them to be able to do and be by the end of my school? Okay, so come back with a couple of different roles. And it might be, I want them to be a Bible teacher. I want them to be able to effectively uh, understand the scriptures and make them clear to others. Okay, well, you can do that out in the world. You can do that on a YWAM base. I want them to be able to create, um, use um, tools to create effective graphic designs to communicate effectively. Great, you can do that out in the world, you can do that on a mission space. But it's a role that you're preparing people to take, okay? So then from there, we'll start looking at what are those outcomes? How do we lead effectively from them as we plan our schools and as we implement them? So let's close in prayer. And I guess, you know, how about, how about Tulio? 
You were carrying some wonderful revelation sorry, there. Sorry, 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 Lisa. We, we do have a plan for closing. Oh, sorry. Yep. Mark, Great. Carolina, go ahead. Nope. Go ahead, Timon and Anna. A gente, vai, a gente vai responder a Deus em oração, sim, mas uma das coisas que a gente tem que ter claro é que a Universidade hum. das Nações não é qualquer universidade. Né? E, Felipe, se você puder ajudar para o inglês, ótimo. E uma das coisas que, que a gente compartilhou nessa manhã é o que faz toda a diferença sobre quem nós somos. Nós não estamos apenas preparando gente que vai saber fazer coisas, gente que vai saber planejar coisas, gente que vai saber é, ser na sociedade. Nós estamos falando sobre alguém completo, que é com o seu coração, que transborda das suas crenças, dos seus valores, pensa com a perspectiva bíblica sobre tudo e assume o seu lugar nesse momento da história de Deus de forma única e que sabe fazer com excelência aquilo que está se propondo. Então, o que a gente está ouvindo nessa manhã é um dos nossos maiores diferenciais e uma das nossas maiores riquezas. Então, não tem como a gente ir embora sem a gente falar assim, Deus, eu quero assumir um compromisso. Eu quero assumir um compromisso de te conhecer mais para eu transbordar em caráter aquilo que é a sua imagem e semelhança. Eu quero te conhecer mais para eu pensar da maneira que você pensa e ser resposta para a oração de Jesus de seja feita a sua vontade assim na terra como é no céu. Eu quero te conhecer mais para que eu saiba que não importa o que eu estou fazendo, eu tenho que fazer com excelência, porque eu estou fazendo como aquele que representa a Deus e que vive diante da glória de Deus. Então, não tem como a gente falar assim, gente, vamos embora agora, porque não, não dá para a gente ir embora agora. Só que, ao mesmo tempo, não sou eu só que tenho que responder. Então, o meu convite é para que você pare agora. Vou dar um minutinho para você pensar. Como é que você responde para Deus? E aí a gente vai abrir o microfone, responder no nosso próprio, próprio idioma. O meu convite, tira um tempo hoje à tarde e pensa sobre os ajustes que você precisa fazer na sua própria visão da Universidade das Nações, para que quando você for liderar uma escola, você se preocupe com essas três áreas. Mente, mãos e coração. E que você seja como Davi, equipado nessas três coisas. Então, vamos parar assim e começar a responder para Deus agora. Mas tira um tempo hoje, antes da gente vir para a sessão da noite, e conversa com Deus sobre isso. Deixa Ele trazer luz no que você precisa se posicionar pessoalmente. E aí a gente pode continuar conversando na jornada e nos nossos relacionamentos pessoais também. Mas vamos começar essa resposta de oração? Se acaba um minutinho, destrava o seu microfone, desbloqueia seu microfone e vamos responder para Ele. Se você tiver uma oração, fica livre e pode começar a responder para Deus. Vamos responder juntos como corpo também, né? Deus, em nome de Jesus, eu quero orar. Eu quero que eu Deus, em nome de Jesus. Father, I want to respond to you today, just saying, yes, Lord, I want to continue to grow in equipping, grow in knowledge, grow in my heart, capacity, and my character to be like you in all your ways, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you. Thank you for your, your giftings to us in that way, Lord. Lula, você pode encerrar para a gente como a Lisa estava trazendo? Em oração, por favor. Deus, muito obrigado porque o Senhor nos desafia. Muito obrigado porque o Senhor nos dá ferramentas novas, ferramentas diferentes, porque o Senhor nos faz pensar eh, fora da nossa caixa, fora da nossa zona de conforto, de, da maneira que seja melhor para os outros, da maneira que seja, seja melhor para as pessoas que nós estamos alcançando, que nós estamos trabalhando. 
para da maneira que seja melhor através da ferramenta que o Senhor nos deu, que é a Universidade das Nações. Continua a nos desafiar, continua a nos ensinar com novas coisas a incorporar na nossa vida, no trabalho, no nosso dia a dia, na nossa obediência ao chamado. Muito obrigado, no nome de Jesus. Amém. Amém. Só mais uma coisa hoje à noite. É, eu preciso que vocês respondam o colégio que vocês estão envolvidos. E individualmente. Hum. Algumas vezes os casais estão respondendo juntos. Lembrem que vocês são importantes para a gente. Então eu preciso que vocês respondam pessoalmente em que colégio você está envolvido, colocando seu nome e tudo mais. Tá joia? Com você. Thank you, everyone. See you later.